Last year was a little light on releases for the Nintendo Switch. I'm hoping that titles that were intended for last year may have been pushed into this year. Am I boring you already? I'm hoping that we start to see some highly anticipated games from Nintendo. Games that we've known about but haven't really heard anything about in a while. There are a ton of games slated for this year, way more than I remember being slated for last year, and a lot of big, ambiguous ones that can't seem to nail down a release date yet. So, like I do every year, I've compiled a list of all of the notable ones, their release dates or non-release dates, so we can see what we're looking forward to coming to Switch soon. This video is sponsored by Blinkist. Oh, hey, Bob Wolf from the Wolf Den here. I lead a really busy life, and I don't have time to enrich my life with the mind-opening medium of books. It's become so problematic that my brain has shriveled into a tiny worthless bean. What was I saying again? Oh yeah, Blinkist. It's like spark notes for audiobooks. They take popular nonfiction books and distill them into bite-sized chunks that you can breeze through while you're on the couch, cooking on the couch, editing a video, or on the couch. They even have The 4-Hour Workweek on here by Tim Ferriss. I'm over here listening to books and learning things I never would have had the willpower to otherwise. MRI scans of them show that the best sushi rolls do indeed contain more air than the inferior ones. Wait, the they used an MRI machine on a sushi? sushi if this interests you even a little bit, of course, you can try it for yourself for free. The first 100 people who click the link in the description below or go to Blinkist.com slash Wolfden will get one week of unlimited access completely for free. And if you decide after that you want to pick it up, you can get 25% off a full membership with that link. So go to Blinkist.com slash Wolfden and start blasting through books today. Oh yeah, I was editing. <laughs> I do a video like this every year. This year, I'm a little late. It's already February. For whatever reason, there was a lot to talk about already this year. Other people made lists like this, but this is my list. You're here for the games that I care about, right? I try to cover a lot of bases, but inevitably, I'm going to have some bias. There's a lot here, so I'll try to plow through all of the notable ones or just ones that I deem more important than others. I'm going to try to go through them in release order and then we'll go through ones that don't have a hard release date yet. We're already a month into the new year, so games have already come out. Like, for example, my favorite game of the year so far, Cyber Shadow. I first played Cyber Shadow at PAX East 2019 and then again at PAX East 2020. Actually, I think it was the thumbnail for both of those videos. It's an homage to the original Ninja Gaiden games for the NES, but a lot less bullshit. Don't get me wrong, it's still a really hard game, but it's not like brutally hard. You definitely need to be up for the challenge. The game starts off easy with simple mechanics, but adds new abilities and movement mechanics as you progress, increasing the difficulty and making you feel way more badass when you're comboing abilities together and powerhousing through difficult platforming sections. It's a beautiful, rewarding game. And it's out now for $20 on basically every console. But if you have Game Pass, you can download it on Xbox as part of your Game Pass subscription. At that point, you have no excuse not to play it. Oh my god, I almost got him. Oh no! <laughs> no! I thought I was done! God! I've been streaming it over on Twitch, and I'm told that I only have two chapters left, so I should be beating it tonight. I always stream the day that videos like this go up. The game is really hard though, so two chapters might take me a long time. Blue Fire was the first game announced at the Indie World Showcase back in March of last year. It's a 3D ninja platformer reminiscent of the type of game you might find on the N64 or GameCube, but with a modern indie look. Blue Fire is actually out today for $20. The latest of the Wii U ports coming to the Switch is Super Mario 3D World. I liked Mario 3D World a lot, but it is one of my least favorite 3D Mario games. It just didn't really add anything to Mario that 
hasn't already been done before and in some cases done better before. But this new version comes with Bowser's Fury, an add-on that sort of acts like a completely different game. Nintendo's kept us in the dark about Bowser's Fury for a while, but we just recently learned that it's kind of a large sandbox. Think of a Mario Odyssey world, but in the engine of Mario 3D World. There's cat shines to collect instead of moons, and there's weather similar to the Blood Moon in Breath of the Wild. New enemies will spawn, new blocks will make things reachable that previously weren't, and a deranged Bowser will hunt you down like Mr. X. At $60, it's kind of hard to justify for what is essentially a quick DLC, but I'll play some 3D world with my friends too. It'll be out February 12th. Persona is one of those things that everybody's always talking about and it looks really cool and I've always wanted to try it, but I never got the chance to. Plus it's an RPG, ew. But Strikers is a hack and slash game. It seems kind of like Dynasty Warriors, but like with things to do in between mashing. This is also the first Persona game on the Switch, finally. It will be out February 23rd at a full $60. Bravely Default 2 is actually the third game in the Bravely Default series. It was first announced at the Game Awards back in December of 2019. I don't know much about this game. I know that it has a pretty large cult following, and I know that there was a demo that was released, and people really didn't like that demo. But they gave a lot of feedback on that demo, and supposedly the developers are fixing a bunch of that stuff. This one comes out February 26th at a full $60. And you could play a demo for it right now. Harvest Moon has a confusing history. Somewhere along the way, development split between Natsume and Marvelous, with Natsume keeping the Harvest Moon name and Marvelous changing the name of their games to Story of Seasons. And from what I understand, Story of Seasons is the good <laughs> And we're getting a new Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town. It looks cute as sh these games are similar to Animal Crossing, but there's a dating sim aspect. Anyway, it's going to be $50 and it comes out March 23rd. Monster Hunter Rise is the first like real Monster Hunter game that's gonna be exclusive to the Nintendo Switch, but that exclusivity is timed. So we should be expecting it to be released on other consoles sometime maybe later this year. Boy, does it sure feel like a Monster Hunter game. The appeal for me is playing with friends. This is definitely a game you want to squad up for. From what I understand, it's all about picking up a class and upgrading your weapons and armor and stuff. And of course, murdering giant creatures. There was a free demo on the eShop that was pretty fun and ran really well on the tiny little Switch. There was a glitch where if you had a lot of people on your friends list, the game would have a weird frame rate, but that's something they're aware of. And I'm sure that most people probably won't have that issue. The most interesting part of this game for me is that Monster Hunter Rise is the first game that is using Nintendo's new multiplayer tech. Nintendo is testing a new way to connect Nintendo Switch Online users. And the demo was a test to see how it performs in the real world. So I'm excited to see if this will lead to a new era of Nintendo games that you can actually play online without feeling like you're playing a slideshow. Anyway, this game comes out March 26th for $60 and I'll probably play it on Twitch that day. Press start and go to info, which is the third button, the third one, a little magnifying glass, go to uh, Hunter's Notes, and then go to Weapon Controls. No. This is everything you will need to know about your weapon. But essentially all you need Sk to know Sk for real this, is- this. Can I copy off of you? Balin Wonderworld. Is this like a Mandela effect? Because I could have sworn that it was called Balin Wonderland. But anyway, I'm interested in this game because it's being created by two people who helped create Sonic the Hedgehog and Knights into Dreams. Yuji Naka and Naoto Oshima? Hell yeah, dude. You might notice the characters have a familiar look to them. I'm hoping the gameplay is familiar as well. There's a free demo out right now, however, it hasn't been received too well.
Hopefully the full game has a little more to offer fans of old 3D platformers. It'll be out March 26th on all consoles and it'll be a full $60. For years, everyone's been begging for a new Pokemon Snap. Not just Pokemon fans, I'm talking grown-ass adults who don't really play games anymore, but they grew up with the original Pokemon Snap. Well, you're in luck, because there's a brand new game coming out literally called New Pokemon Snap. And that's about as creative as they could get. <laughs> I've always said that Pokemon Snap is one of those games that wouldn't really work well today. It's kind of just an on-rails point-and-click adventure that's only four hours long. It's not so much a game as much as it is an amusement park ride that you can just ride over and over and over again. Well, anyway, this one looks very similar to the old one with graphics that also look very similar to the old one. Look, I'd love to be proved wrong here. I'd love it if this new Pokemon Snap slaps, but they'd have to add a lot to make the experience worth it by today's standards. And the Pokemon company just isn't really about that. Maybe they'll let me go to a blockbuster to print out my pictures onto little tiny stickers. Anyway, this game comes out April 30th at a full $60. There's a second Monster Hunter game coming out this year. Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin. The Stories series gives you more of a narrative-driven experience, and it's turn-based with a cutesy art style. So it's set in the Monster Hunter world, but it's kind of nothing like Monster Hunter. This will be available in the summer and has no confirmed MSRP yet. Disgaea 6 Defiance of Destiny is a game that I just have on here for the weeps. I'm sure there are many of you who think it looks too difficult or time consuming to try out. And don't forget Evilities, Reinforcements, or the Squad and Quest Shops either. Chris Tales is an indie turn-based RPG that normally wouldn't be on my radar, but this art style looks sick. It's got a beautiful modern TV animation style that carries over into the actual game world. The world looks awesome. And there's a demo out now if you want to give it a try. The full game will be out sometime in July for every system and it'll be $40. All right, we've already gone through a lot of games, but I want to rapid fire through a few more that are confirmed to be coming out in 2021. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these games get delayed a little bit. For example, No More Heroes 3. It's been highly anticipated for a while now, although we haven't seen much outside of weird, trolly cinematic trailers. Shin Megami Tensei 5 was one of the first games announced for the Nintendo Switch. I talk about it every time I do one of these coming soon to Switch game videos. But we finally have some new trailers and a release window, which is more than I can say for the other big budget IPs we've been waiting years for. Axiom Verge 2 will probably get delayed. It's a sequel to the Metroid-inspired original Axiom Verge that was released in 2015 and was a massive success. It's being developed by one guy, and it's not even his day job, so I guess it'll be done when it's done. Garden Story piqued a lot of people's interest at one of Nintendo's Indie World showcases, and Skatebird has been on people's radar for a little bit now. Very Very Valet piqued my interest at the last Indie World showcase, and that'll be out in early 2021. And we have Neo The World Ends With You. The World Ends With You was a DS game that was a big cult success. Fans have been waiting for a sequel of some sort for a while now, and this looks great. It'll be out in the summer. All right, that's all the big notable games with confirmed release dates to be coming out this year. But there are still a lot of really big notable games that don't have confirmed release dates and we barely know anything about. Big blockbuster titles like Bayonetta 3 and Metroid Prime 4 all we have for these games are these title screen trailers. And that's all we know. The last thing we heard about Bayonetta 3 was Hideki Kamiya telling fans to quote, forget about Bayonetta 3. That's not very reassuring. Of course, there's also the Breath of the Wild sequel that we know nothing about. I'd imagine we should be getting at least some new information about that this year. But I'm also sure that Nintendo has something up their sleeve for this year. A lot of games 
were probably supposed to come out last year that got pushed into this year that we just don't even know about. Nintendo has been announcing games a lot closer to release lately. Paper Mario The Origami King was announced just two months before it actually released. Maybe they're starting to learn a little something from Zelda and Metroid. And it's not just Nintendo keeping us in the dark. Shovel Knight Dig is Yacht Club's next Shovel Knight game with no release date yet. Hollow Knight Silk Song is all people ever talk about when there is an indie direct or announcement. Still no release window there either. Azure Striker Gunvolt 3 is a game I'm personally excited for, but has no release window. Yokai Watch 4 is supposedly coming to the States. Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2 is getting a Switch port one of these days. The pandemic kind of shook up the whole industry. Who knows what this year is going to bring for us. But in any event, there's already plenty of great things to look forward to. And I'm certain that there's going to be a lot of great things that we don't even know about yet. Who would have thought Bowser's Fury would have been a thing? Who would have thought I would be so into a little tiny indie game like Cyber Shadow that just, you know, blindsided a lot of people? I think this year is going to be really good for us. What do you guys think about all of these highly anticipated Nintendo Switch games coming out this year? Did I leave anything out? Is there anything on this list that you're particularly excited for? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. And if you want to know what we're excited about coming to other consoles, you can go over to youtube.com slash wolfdenpodcast once this, once this cop is done. Are you done? I know you're trying to fight crime, but I'm trying to do a YouTube video. Also on that very same podcast, we have an interview with Celia from Yacht Club Games, and we read questions that were answered by the developer of Cyber Shadow. So that was really fun. Go over there and check out that podcast. And of course, don't forget about Twitch. I know a lot of you don't like to leave your humble little platform or YouTube, but Twitch is a fun time. We do a lot more stuff over there too, and it's a way for us to hang out. But of course, the most important thing that you can do to help support us is just subscribe. But only subscribe if you actually want to watch all the new videos and share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe just got a Switch and is looking for some new games for themselves. Thank you very much. You have yourself a good week. I'm trying not to step on the dog. Okay. Oh, I woke him up. I'm so sorry.